You read it right. This so far would probably be the easiest way to paint pine cones. And it's a very short tutorial. And I'll show you the basic things to do. And I assure you after this, after trying my method, you'll be able to create beautiful pine cones in a breeze. Hi everyone, this is Mia and welcome to my video. Please check the list of materials under the description below. Also for your reference, I have included the list of colors equivalent to the Stampin' Up! products that we are using today. So the pine cone would need three shades of brown, the pine needles, two colors of green, and for the berries, just one. The size of my watercolor paper is 10 by 14 centimeters, which is perfect for a card. Prior to sketching anything, and if you wish the subject to be centered, visually make two lines using pencil onto your paper to create three equal spaces. I intend to put the greeting on the bottom third row. Starting just above the first line, draw a triangle with curved edges. Try to contain that triangle onto the second line that you've drawn. Now I'm making the second triangle behind the first triangle. Now we are dividing the first triangle into six equal parts. We're doing the same for the second pine cone. Here's a clearer image. The next step would be filling in those two triangles with smaller but inverted triangles. Notice how the outer smaller triangles are a bit curved on the sides. The bottom triangles are relatively bigger than the rest. We are moving on with the second pine cone and filling it in with inverted triangles. And note that since the second pine cone is a background to the first pine cone, the triangles that we're making here are relatively smaller than the triangles from the first one. Now we will be coloring each inverted triangle or those small triangles that we've done with three shades of brown. Yes, you heard it right. It has to be three. Now we start with the lightest shade of brown. I'm using here Sahara Sand. The first layer would be a very, very light consistency. It is best to use a small watercolor brush for this. I have thoroughly wetted my brush to activate the pigment on my uh, watercolor palette.
The first layer of brown is already dry, so we're moving on to the second layer of a darker brown called soft suede. I am only filling in half of the inverted triangles here. I am filling in the white gaps with a lighter consistency of the same color of brown. To color the pine needles, I would be using two colors, mossy meadow and garden green. We're starting off with the mossy meadow. For the stem, make sure it's a thick consistency to create a very distinct, a bright line. Now using the tip of the brush, Create three fine lines underneath the pine cones. Using the tip of your brush and with a lighter consistency of paint, make downward strokes. That feathered or fine look effect can be achieved if you carefully use the tip of your brush. Doing again the same strokes for the second stem. I am not bothered by the irregular directions here. It actually adds a bit of character to your pine needles, don't you think?
Now, this is the second color for the pine needles called garden green. So we are adding another layer of green or a different color to add a bit of a texture. For the berries, it's just making three circles, leaving a bit of white space on the sides. Adding the berries is optional. I did this to add some contrast. Now adding a bit of green for the berries. I think I'm happy with this and I'm not bothered with the pencil lines. I'm going to leave it at that. I wanted to tidy up my pine cones and give it more definition. So I'm using here a very fine brush and the darkest color of brown cold early espresso. I am putting tiny lines at the edges of every inverted triangle and on the sides. This gives an illusion of shadow. I know everyone's waiting for this part. How to do the background, a soft background with no harsh lines. I'm gonna show you how. For this to be achieved, you need a good brush that takes up a lot of water. It is always handy to have a smaller brush just in case you need to paint um, deeper or narrower spaces. I am now thoroughly wetting my brush, making sure there's enough water in the belly. So I am doing the lower portion of the card here. I'm wetting it first. As mentioned in my other videos, with watercolor painting, you would always use a good quality watercolor paper. Good enough to be able to handle water and gives you enough room to play with the ink. So while the paper is wet, put your paint nearest to the image you have created previously. And using your brush, glide it slowly outwards. If you feel like there's too much pigment on your brush, just wash it lightly and then go back to your work and then spread it again. So to achieve soft edges, make sure that the paper is really wet before you paint on it. It is also called or known as the wet on wet technique. So I am doing the background section by section. There is no point wetting the entire paper for this. 
so on to the next corner the same thing wet it well be careful not to touch the dried images So here's the final product. So you can use any color background. In this case, I chose the Starry Sky by Stampin' Up. But with your watercolor collection, I believe the equivalent or close to it would be the Ultramarine. I turned this painting into a simple Christmas card. I hope you enjoyed watching and learned a thing or two. If you have any questions, Please message me anytime. Thank you. Bye.